Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Physics of Under. This is ninth video from tensor analysis. In the previous video, we got some idea about symmetric and anti-symmetric tensor. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss about completely or fully anti-symmetric tensor and its application in various aspects of physics. This short video will be very informative and this is going to be very helpful to all of you please watch this video till the end if you like this video then please share this with others and if you are new to my channel then please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for future notifications let's start the video let us start with completely or fully anti-symmetric tensors let's see the definition first for that, we consider a tensor epsilon with indices i1, i2 up to in. Clearly, this is the tensor of rank n in an n-dimensional space. So, it has n to the power n components. If the given tensor holds these properties simultaneously, then the tensor is called completely or fully antisymmetric tensor. Let's see the properties. For event permutation of the indices i1, i2 up to in, the corresponding components become plus 1. This is the first property. For odd permutation of the indices i1, i2 up to in, the corresponding components becomes minus 1. And if any two or more indices are equal to each other in such in, a, in any components, then that component becomes 0. Means for any component, we get i1 is equal to i2 or i1 is equal to i2 is equal to i3, then that component becomes 0. If all these properties hold simultaneously, then the given tensor has n factorial non-vanishing components and this type of tensor is called completely or fully anti-symmetric tensor of rank n. This is the definition of completely or fully anti-symmetric tensor. Let's understand this definition with an example. For that, we consider a tensor of rank 3 in 3-dimensional space. So, it has 3 factorial non-vanishing components. Among those components, if we got the value as plus 1, for even permutated components such as epsilon 1, 2, 3, epsilon 2, 3, 1, epsilon 3, 1, 2, all these components are obtained by even permutation of the indices. If we get the value of all these components as plus 1, as well as we get the values of those components which are obtained by odd permutation of the corresponding indices such as epsilon 2, 3, 2, 1, 3, epsilon 3, 2, 1, epsilon 1, 3, 2 as minus 1. All these components are obtained by odd permutation of the indices and if we get the value minus 1. Also, if first and second indices index second and third index or all these indices are equal, then the corresponding components becomes zero. Then only the given tensor is called completely or fully anti-symmetric tensor of uh, rank 3. Now what is event permutation and odd permutation? If we look these components carefully, then we can understand what is even and what is odd permutation. For that, we take help of this diagram. Here, we write 1, 2, 3 number on the periphery of a circle. Even permutation means clockwise rotation of the indices. That means, let us start with component indices 1, 2, 3. If we clockwise shuffle these indices, then we get 2, 3, 1 like this, 3, 1, 2 like this. All these are even permutation of the indices. 
if we shuffle the indices as a anti clockwise manner then the corresponding shuffling of indices is called odd permutation such as 1 3 2 like this 3 2 1 like this 2 1 3 like this all these are got by anti-clockwise shuffling of indices that's why this is odd permutation so even permutation and odd permutation are clearly understand understood here now the components which we got by event permutation of the indices have values plus one the components which we got by odd permutation of the indices have values minus one and if any two or more indices in a component are equal then that component becomes zero then only the given tensor is called completely or fully anti-symmetric tensor. Here we consider a tensor of rank 3 as an example. So this is completely or fully anti-symmetric tensor of rank 3. Now the notation epsilon i j k generally called la vasivita symbol. This, this is just for information. So, the notation epsilon i j k is called la vasivita symbol. Now, why we learn all these? If these have any application, of course, let's see that in the next slide. Let us consider two vector u and v with components u1, u2, u3 and v1, v2, v3 respectively. If we made cross product of these two vectors, then we get the components of that cross product like this. We all know this. If we watch these components carefully, then we can write the components in general like this equation with la vasivita symbol how we can write this let's see that if we want to get the first component then we can put i is equal to 1 okay so in the la vasivita symbol we put i is equal to 1 if j is equal to 2 and k is equal to 3 then epsilon 1 2 3 even permutation that means this becomes plus 1 and we are left with u2 v3 this is the th this term and if we consider j is equal to 3 k is equal to 2 and i is equal to 1 because we, uh, we want to get the first component so we consider i is equal to 1 here but now we consider j is equal to 2, k is equal to, uh, j is equal to 3, k is equal to 2. Then what do we get? 1, 3, 2. That means odd permutation. So the La Vasivita symbol becomes minus 1. And we get, we are left with u3, v2 with a negative sign. Because j and k are repeated index, so summation over the, uh, over this j, j and k term, if we consider the algebraic summation, we get the first component. Likewise, if we put i is equal to 2 and do same arithmetic, then we get the second component. And if we put i is equal to 3 and do the same arithmetic, we get the third component. So this is an application of the completely or fully anti-symmetric tensor in uh, other aspect of physics. We can extend this concept in the angular momentum commutation relation also. What is that? This is the all in one type angular momentum commutation relations. If we study this relation, 
properly then we get the all angular momentum commutations relation let's see that if we want to find out angular momentum commutation relation between l1 and l2 then we get i is equal to 1 j is equal to 2 clearly k is equal to 3 then we get epsilon i is equal to 1 j is equal to 2 and k is equal to 3 that means 1 2 3 even permutation this becomes plus 1 and we are left with plus i h cut l3 but if we want the commutation relation between l2 and l1 that means i is equal to 2 and j is equal to 1 then we get epsilon 2 1 3 so this term becomes minus 1 and we are left with minus i h cut l3 which we all know person relation between l2 and l1 becomes uh, minus i h cut l3 whereas commutation relation between l1 and l2 becomes plus i h cut l3 similarly we can get the commutation relation between l2 and l3 l3 and l2 l1 and l3 l3 and l1 also by proper arithmetic and application of la vasivita symbol that means with the help of completely or fully antisymmetric tensor so these are the applications of completely or fully antisymmetric tensors in some different aspects of physics hope you enjoyed this video if you have some queries or suggestion then please write in the comment section below your comment will definitely help me to improve my future videos thanks for watching this video